Right, I thought I'd do a quick homebrew-ish Wednesday. I haven't done one for a while. Um, I've got a little bit of footage that I recorded about two weeks ago now. I did a um, Cooper Cerveza that was sent to me by Bound by Beer Brewery. And um, I brewed it pretty much as it is with the kit. I think I put a Cooper's beer kit enhancer one with it. And uh, took a little bit of that off and boiled it up and um, put some Sriracha Ace Ops in it. I originally bought them because someone was selling them on a forum and was going to do a, an all grain brew of them, but I hadn't got around to using them. And I thought rather than let them go to waste, I'm going to chuck a load in that. And I used, and you'll see in the video, I'm going to tag it onto the end of this video, um, a little filter kind of um, to keep the hops separate, the pellets or gunk in the, in the pan. And this is it here, and it's basically just a. Um, a tea filter or a tea infuser and it's an army tea infuser apparently I got it off of like an army surplus store it's about I don't know 15 centimeters in height it's got a little tiny little handle there and I just put it in the middle of the saucepan put the pellet hops in there and boiled around it kind of thing and all the water goes into it it's got a solid bottom but the um it looks like I think it's like fully stainless steel on that but to buy like an equivalent version of it you can get sort of quite long ones from America now they make this kind of like um, a hop filter. Um, are quite expensive, and this was only like sort of like seven pounds or something. Um, obviously, being like army settlers, they have all sort of been used in that. But I mean, it, it was clean when it came. But I just cleaned it up a little bit more with um, some barkeeper's friend and a toothbrush, and it came out great. And it feels it's really solid. It's not like a thin bit of metal. And the the, the course of the mesh is really fine. So at the end. You'll see in the footage, it kept most of the, the gunk in there. And I used it at the weekend as well when I racked off the uh, laser. It made an ideal sort of like filter. Instead of the little filter bags you get with some of the kits to filter the uh, the hops coming out, just put this into the sort of fermenter to stop it sort of aerating the water too much. Do it into it, and then as it's getting up, I mean, really, you could probably tack like a little handle onto it, put your, your siphon uh, hose into that, then sort of lift it up accordingly kind of thing. But um, it worked a treat. I have got coming um, a larger version of this, which is also a, a tea infuser for the British Army, or was they don't they don't use them anymore. Um, in the view to kind of use it in the boil kettle and in my other boiler, that I can uh, I'm going to get someone to kind of like just spot weld like a little handle onto it so that it sits over the boil kettle and will contain all the hops and hopefully contain pellet hops because that kind of is a bit of a pain when you're kind of doing it in some of the boilers and that might. My main boiler takes away leaf hops quite well. When it comes to pellets, you get like a, a, a vast amount of gunk. So uh, if that works out well, I'll, I'll definitely be showing that off. Um, been having a couple of good beers. It's my birthday today. Um, just recently sunk that from Beaver Town, Gamma Ray, which was really, really nice. And really kind of like, I don't know. It was really fresh. It tasted really good. But just opened up the bottle of Odell Brewing IPA, but once again, I mean, someone bought this for me. It's it's kind of already past its kind of like used by date, I guess if you like. And it's kind of disappointing thing sometimes when you get them from America that they kind of they've exceeded their um, their brewing date, and they kind of like lost that real kind of fresh poppiness. I mean, it is still it's there, but I've had a fresher one of these before, and it was much more pungent but this one's kind of feels like it's fading a little bit still a great beer I think I don't think I've had a disappointing one from from these people it is really nice um, that's about it really I think I've got a couple more videos coming up I've got a few more kits to roll I've got quite a few kits actually that are just kind of sitting around I kind of put the grain on hold while it's been so hot I'm just about the risk of um, fermenting in the flax it's just too warm so I'm going to use up kits I've got a Cooper Pale Ale to use which I'm going to um, use a load of Columbus I think to hop out on that and I've got a old Young's Harvest bitter kit I think that only cost me about three quid um, but I'm going to use part of that as um, a dry run for um, putting into a, a keg because I've got plans or a foot for having um, the mini keg in the flat like a, a small corny keg I've got um, another component that I received as a birthday present all the way from Australia so it's kind of coming into the, the final stages of being able to have a, a keg in the flat and not taking up too much room and 
and getting a uh, getting a grief from the wife as it is. So that's pretty much it. I've got a couple of nice strong beers to drink soon. I might do a couple of reviews on a couple of them, a couple from um, Harvest Down Brewery. Um, and a few more videos to do. So at the end of this, I'm going to tack on the, the brew footage of the the kit brew from the Cooper Surveyor. It's not an awful lot of footage, but it's just a little bit that I thought I'd tack on. I'm right, just going to do a quick bit of footage. Uh, brewing up a Cooper Cerveza today, which happens to be one of the most boringest of kits you can get. I think it's got like next to no flavour. It's quite easy drinking, but it's it's pretty plain as it goes. Um, I had some hops that I was going to use in an all grain beer that I haven't got around to yet, um, and that is some Sriracha Ace. Um, I believe they give quite a distinct lemony flavour. So I'm going to uh, boil a few of them up in a little bit of. Cooper's Beer and Hearts of One. Um, it did say you can do this uh, Cooper's recipe online with um, Clipso hops. Um, I couldn't bother to go and buy extra hops just to do it. Um, so I'm going to use the Sriracha Ace hops, but I've also got this little um, tea strainer type thing that I got off the internet. So I think it's meant to be an army tea strainer, um, which is like fully stainless steel. You can hang it on the side of your boil pot, but I'm going to use that to boil the, the pellet hops in there. And hopefully keep a lot of the uh, the muck and that inside that rather than the saucepan so I'm going to add that to the saucepan in a minute once it's up to boil boil it for about 10 minutes and then add the beer kit as normal um, probably top it up to about 20 litres and I'm going to probably dry hop with some more after the uh, the first five days I'm not sure the exact amount yet and then um, hopefully it'll give it a bit of a better flavour I'm also going to swap out the yeast and just use USO5, I'm going to rehydrate that in a second and I'm going to ferment it into the uh, stainless steel brew bucket see if that um, helps the flavour a bit so I'm going to cut back to when I'm uh, adding all the ingredients Right, I just wanted to show you, I'm only doing it in a little pan at the moment but potentially you could hang this on the, the side of your actual boil pot it's, uh, it's contained the hops inside, there's a messy sludge in there but you can see all the hot matter is dispersing because it's all the water's gone green um, you can get much larger versions of these. Um, I've seen online there's a couple of companies that make these kind of fine mesh, I think it's 300 grade mesh, that fit on the side of your boil pot. They make them exactly to size, they do them for brown mices, they do literally any size they can make it for you. Uh, I think they, they deal in biodiesel and obviously as a, an offshot of that they've got lots of this stainless steel mesh lying around to uh, make it for you. They are quite expensive to import. Um, but they're also expensive to make. I've looked into getting a couple of people to try and make me one in this country, but it almost be just as cheaper to order it and pay the import fee and get it over here because stainless steel mesh of that grade is expensive and you have to buy a sheet of it, you can't just buy little offcuts to make it. So um, I might, may import one in the future, but I think I'll wait until I've got a definite size of boil pot rather than, you know, I wouldn't want several of them. They also do dry hopping filters as well. So it's got a very fine mesh and it's weighted and you can drop it into your container. I think they do like a kit where you can get a mesh, um, sort of dry hopping thing, one for the boil pot. I'll put the link to them down in, in this video actually because it is they are they do look quite interesting but um, they are quite expensive but um, if it helps keep a lot of the hot matter out of the actual fermenter I think it's uh, it's got to be worth a shot. Right it's time to add all the ingredients to the fermenter but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them to the plastic bucket um, concentrate them in the bottom, get it all stirred up and then add it to the brew bucket because of the conical bottom I don't want it all the, um, the, wall, the sticky wall to stick to the, the cone part and then not be able to come out. I've found these gloves to be a lot more better than tea towels and whatnot, they're kind of like quite thick industrial grade gloves that allow you to hold the can and not burn your fingers so much when you're tipping it in, especially when you've uh, refill it with hot water and you're tipping it out. I'm just going to top this up with hot water now, rinse that out. 
This is where the gloves come into their own. I'm just going to check that the actual right, so as you'll see that's the, the hop strainer in there and it has contained all of the muck actually in there I mean a lot of the time I just chuck the, um, the hop pellet sort of sludge straight in there so it would be interesting to see how it affects the flavour if it ruins it or, or it helps it, I don't know so just let's take that out. Certainly makes taking it out a lot easier. This is just hot, hoppy water or water. Now I'm going to stir all that. I might add a little bit more hot water. And once that's liquid enough to go into the fermenter, I'll add it to the, uh, the stainless steel brew bucket just so that there isn't a thick sludge right on the bottom. Actually, the hops do. I'm getting a bit of a, a bit of a lemony smell from them. Right, that's nice and mixed up. So I'm going to cut back to when we're pitching the yeast and then adding it to the. 